Hello and welcome. Today I am going to work in my tab bound journal that I made a couple of weeks ago. The theme is birds, bees, and botanicals for this little journal. And I recorded the process um, showing how I made this journal. So I'll link that down below in the description box if you haven't seen that video and you would like to know how to make a journal like this. So today I'm going to work on a few of the pages in the journal. So I have all around me scraps of things I might use going along with the theme. Plus I have some labels and I have some postage stamps. I have scraps of leftover paper from making the journal. I have um, scraps of fabric and florals, birds, and um, of napkins on the right hand side there with some bees. I don't have a lot of bee stuff actually so I'm glad I found those napkins. So right away I was inspired by that textury uh, paper fabric. I don't know what it's called. I got it from a company called Mulberry Paper and I love using that as a background and um you know, I think in retrospect that first flower I used looked absolutely fine, but I decided <laughs> to try, you know, 20 other things instead, and I eventually figure this all out, but let me just say that I had started this video later in the afternoon. I probably should have started it the next day, but I was determined to get at least get a start, and um it had been a long day and I was really tired, so I was really, um, my inspiration was uh, lagging a bit uh, this afternoon. But I pushed through and I, and I <laughs> got my start on this journal. But again, after trying various things, I settle on what I want to, how I want to decorate the page. And I edge the um, labels with some brown distress ink. And then I glue everything down with my glue stick. I like using a glue stick whenever possible. I think it works fine as long as you have a good quality glue stick and you add uh, coverage on the on your paper, on the back of your paper, you know, cover the whole thing so it really grips. I've, I haven't had any problems with that. Even with that fabric paper, that paper fabric, it's pretty thin so it works fine on that too. And, you know, this is a journal for myself, so if anything ever falls off, I can just glue it back on. But, like I said, I haven't really had too many problems with that. So, I glue everything down, and I attach that label at the bottom. And la I'll, later, I'll add a word to that label. Oh, I figured out that label is actually a sticker. <laughs> And so before I added glue to it, so that's good. Later I'll add a word to that label and that's my first page done. I really like the way that turned out. It's really cute, quick and simple page. And um, the little bee there goes with the paper on the left side, that honeycomb pattern. So now I'm gonna move on to the next page. And before I started recording, I had actually thought I would start with this page, but I got inspired by that other page so um, I had already scoped out that I wanted to use that sheet music and that bird and as I mentioned before I had been it had been a long day and I honestly tried every kind of combination I think of things on my table there and finally gave up and it's the next day now and I you know with a clear mind and renewed energy I figured out what I wanted to add to the um to this page and so that's why I jumped ahead because you don't need to see me you know trying 50 different combinations of things so I am edging that uh, music paper because I want it to stand out a little bit more um, than the rest of the background and again I just glue everything down and and I decided I wanted some words at the bottom. And I happen to have this washi tape that has these words, life is beautiful. And I thought they would look nice at the bottom there. I tried them at the top, but I, I didn't like that. So I attached that to the bottom of the page. And I think that adds a nice little finishing touch, trying to figure out where to put that. This page did give me some trouble, I have to say. Um, but it turned out in the end. <laughs> and um, 
I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So I attached the the uh, tape there, and then I decided I really needed something on the top of the page. It was pretty empty, and I um, decided fairly quickly to use that little label. I don't know where I got that from, but it's really cool and somewhat transparent, as you can see. It looks really nice there, I think. Um, I had some trouble trimming it up completely, which you'll see there in a moment. I have to struggle. I should have cut this part out. <laughs> but anyway, that page is done, and then I'm going to move on to the next page in which I wanted to use one of my napkins. So I'm looking through my book in just a moment trying to decide what page I will use my napkin image on. And I picked that image because it has a B and I wanted to do another B page. As I said before, I don't have a lot of B images, so I did want to use the things that I do have on those pages with the B theme. So um, I also wanted to show a technique with, um, with the napkin. Uh, which I love to do, but I haven't done it in a long time, so um, I'm glad I did it again. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put that flower and that bee, and I decided instead of continuing to flip through the pages, I would tear out the image I want to use and then try it on the pages to see where I like it. So in order to use napkins on a background, you have to tear the layers apart. And some napkins have two layers and ha some have three, maybe more, I don't know. But this one has three layers, so I take all the layers apart. Um, you can save those blank white layers to use as a background to add texture in an art journal page if you want to. Um, but I, today I'm using the image and to tear out that image easily, many of you probably know this, you use a paint brush with some water and you outline the image, the part that you want to tear out and then it just tears very easily and you'll see that and what I'm doing um, with the paint brush. That's just water on my brush and I'm reaching for a jar of water that I have nearby and I'm outlining, outlining the image that I want to tear out. So see how easily that works. And then I'm trying to figure out what else to tear off. And there you go. So I'm doing the same process again with the water. And now I will look at the image by itself instead of the whole napkin and decide where I want to put it. And that makes it a lot easier for me to decide. I end up deciding to use it on this page with the beehives and I found that little image of a beehive that I have in black and white so it pulls the black color from the left side of the spread over to the right which is nice to do and I wanted to have my napkin blend into the background a little bit better so I decided to use a little bit of that paint. It's like a buff color and it will um, provide, I think, a, like a, a more neutral background for my napkin to go on to. And uh, I'm, I'm spreading that out a little bit even onto the fabric tabs. I don't mind that at all because um, those tabs, that fabric is pretty dark. And um, I'm not putting any paint there where I'm going to put the beehive. And then I also thought in, I would use a little more color. And I was debating between pink and light green. A light pink and a light green. And I decided to use the green because that green is on the left side of that spread. And it's also, of course, in the stem and the leaves of the flower. So I thought that would work better. And I just dab it, as you can see, here and there with my finger, very, very lightly. I don't want a lot of color here. I want to keep the background fairly neutral and just add a touch of color. So that works out well. <laughs> I have to clean my fingers off so I don't spread paint all over the place, which is what I normally do. <laughs> and I want to make sure that page is dry before I continue that it's very light coat of paint so it dries quickly and 
it's that particular paint I'm using as a paper artsy paint and those paints dry super quick too. So I'll just attach my image with the glue stick again and then to attach the napkin I like to use matte medium. You can also use Mod Podge um, but I usually prefer matte medium these days and I'm going to also put that little piece of napkin at the bottom because my napkin image doesn't cover the page all the way down to the end. So I'm going to put the matte medium on the page, not the napkin because that would be too difficult. It would probably tear. I want to avoid my image because that is printed on a laser, I'm mean, not a laser, an inkjet printer. And so if I put liquid on it, I'll ruin my image. So there I am attaching the napkin and you can see you put matte medium over the top and it just just kind of melts into the page basically. It, it's a great technique if you've never tried it. I highly recommend it. And so I'm attaching that part at the bottom. And I'm pretty I like the way that looks so far. And then I decided that that little bee needed some friends <laughs> um, on the page. So I dither around quite a bit with my bees before deciding where to add them. But I added two more little bees. I just tore those off, obviously, without using the water technique because that, that's not very difficult. So again, you can see I probably should have cut this part out, but... Oh well, I didn't, so <laughs> you can see I'm just really wondering where the heck I'm going to put those bees. And fortunately, I end up putting them in a in spots that I like. <laughs> and that is still wet with some matte medium, so it sticks easily. And I use my finger to put some extra matte medium on the top. Um, and then... I attach that bee again. Where am I going to put that bee? Okay, figured it out. <laughs> I'm trying to get some matte medium on my finger. And there you go. So that has to dry. And you can see how it looks on the page. I think it looks great. I love it. <laughs> and um, I distressed that image with a little bit of brown distressing in the edge of the page because... Um, that image was so stark white, I thought it needed to be toned down a bit, and I really like the way that looks. I added a label right there, kind of covers up a little awkward spot where my two napkins came together and doesn't look that great. Plus, I really think that label looks nice there. So that page is pretty much done. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say about that. I had planned to finish up with this page on this video, but when I was rummaging through my things earlier, I came across that flower and I decided I would use it on this page. I put the clip there to, so I could remember and find it quickly. So again, I'm gonna show you how I am dithering a bit on what how to put it together, but um, all in all, this was a pretty quick page too. I really like that background paper. It's paper that I used in other parts of this journal. Uh, it's a Tim Holtz scrapbook paper. And originally I thought I would use the, the scrapbook paper that way, but I really wanted to show some more of that background with the numbers and the ledger sheet. I think that looks really nice. So I didn't want to cover all of that up. So I... Um, was thinking about it and I'm showing you there I'm crossing my fingers hoping I like it I decide I'm going to tear it <laughs> and fortunately it works out I really like the way that looks and I like it so much I'm going to tear more <laughs> and just trying to figure out where I'm going to put that paper because there's that dark line at the top right there that I really don't like so I want to cover that up and as much as possible I think it's very distracting so um Again, moving the paper around, where, where, where am I going to put this? And finally, land on a decision that I'm going to put it together that way. I'm going to move the paper up, I think, to the top and cover that so it doesn't look quite so awkward. So basically, I'm just going to glue 
that stuff down. But I also decided that it needed something on the bottom left-hand side of the flower. And I tried to add a little blingy thing, which you'll see in a minute. Another thing I probably maybe should have cut out. It doesn't really, it doesn't end up <laughs> making the page. But um, as I was editing it, I, I guess I forgot. But anyway, um, I really like a little bit of bling on my pages sometimes, even the vintage ones. I think it looks nice. But that one's uh, like too much and too, too busy for that simple page. So I look to the right and I see this little piece of paper that has green but a different shade of green and that works out great. So I glued that down and then glued everything else down. So you'll see me gluing stuff. Um, I probably should have cut that part out too. <laughs> I think most of us know how to glue but you know, sometimes when you're editing, you don't think of these things. Uh, and then sometimes, I don't know, people like to see the whole process too. So hopefully it's not too boring. <laughs> and um, again, just gluing things down. Uh, something else I'll say about glue <laughs> is I'm always covering my glue if I'm not going to use it right away again because... Um, glue sticks can dry up the very quickly I found and um, that other glue that I'm using the art glitter glue dries clear art glitter glue it has no glitter in it if you haven't heard of it it's a great glue um, but you have to put your uh, pin back in the um, needle tip because it clogs up in minutes <laughs> So you have to be very careful. So that is that page put together. And I feel like I need something on that uh, bottom left side of the flower um, still. And so I remembered that I had pulled out some stencils and I was going to do some stenciling with modeling paste on a page and I realized this is the perfect page to do that. So I looked at the stencils that I pulled out and um, landed on the stencil you'll see there. Okay, that one that has like a little leaf kind of border and I decided I would put a few little touches of that leaf border in a few spots, three spots, you know, doing things in odd numbers. And so what I do is I use the modeling paste. I put it in a little medicine cup. I add some of that buff colored paint to it because I didn't want it to be white. I wanted to just be um, slightly tinted and I mix it up really well. And then um, I cover up the part of the design that I don't want to be on my page with a little bit of washi tape that I had nearby and then I carefully put the design on with the modeling paste and I realized I should do the top right first usually I, I go backwards and you know if I had done the bottom one first I'd have to wait till that dried to then do the top so I wouldn't mess it up and I finally got smart and did it in the right order. So there's the one and you can't really see that. It's subtle but I really like that little touch. And I do one there and then I decided to do a third one on the top left side and you'll see that in a minute. Okay, I'm back with a little recap of what I worked on in this video. I'm just going to flip through the pages till I get there. Again, this is the page I made originally when I made this little journal. This is the first page I made, and I did attach that word hope there, which happened to be on my desk. I think that looks nice. Here's the page I struggled with a bit. Um, it's a little busy, but I do like it, and um, I'm just happy that I was able to put it together. Uh, finally, this is the page with the modeling paste. Everything's dry. I added this little piece down here that I also just had on my desk. And I wanted to just ground that flower so it wasn't just floating in midair like that. And um, uh, it, later on, if I find another little piece that 
looks good with that or maybe even a scrap of that same paper I might put some up here to kind of balance out the black and the black but I think it looks fine like that too so I'm not really that worried about it and then I just put this little scrap of fabric here just to have something on the clip and I really like that little fabric and the other ones I pulled out I would like to use them sometime and then I have I feel like I skipped something I did did I Oh, the napkin page. Hold on. There it is. <laughs> um, this one, the napkin, obviously. I really love the way that turned out. The napkin blends in so beautifully with the background. And um, I also added another tab because originally I had two tabs here, one at the top. And I thought, you know, three looked a little better. So I just punched that out of some scrapbook paper that I had left over a bunch of scraps from this project and attached a little label. So, um, oh, and I put all of my scraps and miscellaneous things that I was uh, had all around me, plus more, <laughs> in this um, record envelope um, holder that so that I could um, keep everything together. So when I work want to work on this journal or anything floral, botanical, um, bee related, I can have bird related, I can have uh, readily available scraps to use. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.